This movie deals with simple harmonic motion. It is intended for viewing before students do a laboratory experiment designed to illustrate the determination of the force constant of a spring. Upon completion of the laboratory activity associated with this movie, students will be expected to be able to describe simple harmonic motion and interpret it in terms of forces acting on the oscillator as it moves and determine the force constant of a spring. A harmonic oscillator is an object whose motion can be described as a periodic function of time. The location of the particle, x, as a function of time, t, is of the form x equals x naught, the amplitude of the motion times the sine or cosine of a constant, c, times time, t. To easily visualize the significance of the constant c, it is convenient to write it in the form 2 times pi divided by tau, or 2 times pi times f. Here, tau is the period of the oscillation, and f is the reciprocal of tau, the frequency. As we shall see next, the amplitude of the motion tells us the range of motion of the oscillator. Essentially, the oscillator moves back and forth between x naught and negative x naught. x naught and negative x naught are also referred to as the turning points. Shown here is an example of an object whose motion is considered to be simple harmonic. The location, x, is given by x naught times the cosine of 2 times pi times t over tau. Examine the graph on the right. Can you identify the period? The period is one unit of time. Note that the plot from t equals 0 to t equal to 1 repeats from t equal to 1 to t equal to 2. At time equal to zero, the object is located at x naught. The particle moves toward x equals zero. The object speeds up in the process. You will note that the steepest slopes in the plot occur when x equals zero. Once the object passes x equals zero, it slows down and eventually stops when it reaches negative x naught. The object speeds up again as it moves back toward x equals zero, slows down when it passes x equals zero, and stops when it reaches x naught. This completes one cycle of motion. Simple harmonic motion results whenever the net force on an object is directly proportional to its displacement from some reference location, and the force is directed toward the reference location. We refer to the reference location as the equilibrium position. The proportionality constant, shown here as k, is called the force constant. In the example shown here, the equilibrium position is at x equals zero. You will recall that the object slows down when it moves away from x equals zero. This means that the acceleration and the force on the object are directed toward x equals zero. Similarly, the object speeds up when it approaches the equilibrium position. Again, this means that the acceleration and the force are directed toward the equilibrium position. If that force depends on location this way, we say that it follows Hooke's law. It can be shown that the motion is a sinusoidal function of time and that the period of the oscillation is 2 pi times the square root of m over k where m is the mass of the object and the constant k is called the force constant. An example of an object whose motion can be considered as simple harmonic is a pendulum, as long as it does not swing too far from vertical. The force constant can be shown to be equal to mg over l. Here, m is the mass of the pendulum bob, g is the acceleration due to gravity, and l is the length of the pendulum. We can show that for a pendulum, the period of oscillation is equal to 2 pi times the square root of L over G. This experiment illustrates two ways of determining the force constant of a spring. Before you set up the apparatus, 
Determine the mass of the spring since you will need this information for part two. In the first part of this experiment, we will verify that the elongation of a spring follows Hooke's law. We will mount a spring vertically, as shown in the picture here, and suspend a weight hanger at the bottom of the spring. A meter stick is also mounted parallel to the spring. We will define our reference location, Y0, as the reading on the meter stick corresponding to the bottom of the hanger. We will then add 10 gram loads to the hanger. This will cause the spring to stretch. We will record the equilibrium position, Y, as the reading on the meter stick corresponding to the bottom of the hanger. The elongation of the spring, X, is equal to the difference Y minus Y naught. The upward force, shown in the picture as vector F, on the load is the normal force. That is, the upward thrust of the bottom of the hanger on the load. This is equal to the tension in the spring. If this is proportional to the elongation of the spring, then at equilibrium, this is equal and opposite in direction to the force of gravity on the load. If we take the downward direction as the positive x direction, mg, the force of gravity on the load is equal to kx, the upward force on the load, or x equals a constant g over k, times the mass, m. In other words, the elongation is directly proportional to the mass of the load. We would expect a plot of the x versus m to be a straight line with slope equal to g over k. Since we know the value of g, we can determine the force constant of the spring. In the second part of this experiment, we will determine the value of the force constant of a spring from its period of oscillation. With different loads in the hanger, we will stretch the spring 3 to 5 centimeters below its equilibrium position, then release. This will cause the load to undergo a simple harmonic motion. Record the time it takes for the motion to go through 100 cycles. We divide this time by 100 to get the actual period. When analyzing your data from part 1, it would be useful to express the elongation in meters and the load mass in kilograms. Remember that the elongation is the difference in the locations of the equilibrium positions of the loaded and unloaded hanger, as read from the meter stick. From the slope of the plot, we can calculate the force constant, k, in newtons per meter, dividing the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared, by the slope of the plot. To analyze the data from the second part, recall that the period of oscillation, tau, can be shown to be equal to 2 pi times the square root of m over k. If we square both sides of the equation, we could see that plotting the square of the period versus the mass of the oscillator gives us a straight line with slope equal to 4 pi squared over k. In this equation, k is the force constant that we want to determine. The mass of the oscillator, m is not just the mass of the hanger and its load. We must include the mass of the spring, shown here as m sub s. However, it would be incorrect to include the entire mass of the spring because only the lower end moves with the same velocity and amplitude as the hanger and load. The upper end of the spring is at rest and the intermediate points move with the intermediate velocity and amplitude. Therefore, we include only a fraction of m sub s in the calculation. We don't know exactly what fraction, so we represent it here by lowercase f. We expect it to be a number between 0 and 1. When analyzing your data, express the period in seconds and the mass of the hanger and load in kilograms. If we plot the square of the period versus the mass of the hanger and load, we should get a straight line with slope equal to 4 pi squared over k. Therefore, we can determine k as 4 pi squared over slope. The y-intercept is equal to 4 pi squared over k, times the f, times the mass of the spring. Since 4 pi squared over k is equal to the slope, the y-intercept is equal to slope times f times mass of the spring. From this, we should be able to calculate the value of f.